then also to power down the phone, which is quite interesting, you have to hit the side button along with the volume button to get it to uh, turn off, which is kind of a, a little bit of an interesting maneuver, but you know that's, I guess, what Apple decided would be the most convenient for those wanting to power off their device. Before we get to the main event, which is, of course, the phone, we will check out the accessories and other things that are inside the box. So let me go ahead and take out the phone and kind of place it to the side. And as you can see, inside the box there is a Apple charger. This is not a quick charge solution. You do have to purchase that separately. But for those who have purchased an iPhone previously, this will definitely look familiar as it is the same or identical charger that has come with iPhones for quite a while. There is also a wired set of ear pods. This does come with an adapter because the iPhone 10 does not have a headphone port. So you will have to connect this lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter. And then lastly, there is a charging cable. This is a USB type A to lightning. Nothing special here. So we'll go ahead and put that back. Now on to the main event. And as you can see in the reflection, I do have an external mic attached just so we can capture the delicious noise of it being unwrapped for those that like that sort of thing. But before we get to that, we'll go ahead and take a quick glance over the handset. You can see that it is fairly glossy. The back and front shimmer in the light. And this is a phone that is actually relatively heavy due to the stainless steel, but it does feel solid in hand. On the left hand side, we can see the volume rocker with the up and down. And then on top of that, we can see the ring mute switch, which allows you to easily toggle through having your ringer on and off. On the bottom, we have the speaker grills with the lightning port. And on the other side, we can see the side button, which is fairly long compared to the standard power button and the SIM card slot. Without further ado, let's go ahead and peel off the casing. Now with the protective film removed, you can see that this is an extremely shiny phone. This was mentioned prior, but the reflection is absolutely insane without that cover. Moving the front protective cover, we get a good look at the front display. It's really tough to tell exactly where the display starts and ends while the screen is off. On the top notch, you can definitely tell, but on the sides, it's a lot harder. Just going to take another look at the back. And you can see the reflection of that. So let's go ahead and get this powered on so we can take a look at what the screen looks like. Per usual, we can see the Apple logo comes on. Nothing looks really different at this point. Everything looks like a standard iPhone, again from recollection here. I've not used one for quite some time. But once it turns on, we get the full display. And this is actually quite surprising. It does take quite a bit of screen real estate, but you do notice that the black borders are more pronounced compared to, say, a Samsung Galaxy S8 or an LG V30. It doesn't look bad per se, but it definitely does look a little different. You can tell in the image that there is a border. Um, this will be something that I'll have to test more when I get used to using it. So diving into the software, we can see that it does the traditional uh, greeting. Um, there is the border again that I'm talking about uh, prior. But uh, let's go ahead and dive into the actual software. We do have to pull up from the bottom. So we'll go ahead and swipe up. Swiping up brings the language menu. Choose English. Select the region. And this is a quick start that shows you exactly how to use the phone. Because again, there is 
uh, a little bit of a difference. Uh, for now, we're just going to kind of zip through. Uh, later, we'll have more details on Face ID and the other features of the phone. This will just be a quick unboxing. Go ahead and skip that. Won't be creating a passcode for the device. But there are various options to take advantage of if you choose to do so. And this will be a fresh start, no backup. You go ahead and enter the... So it did take about 20 seconds for it to validate my account. This can obviously vary. Um, I've cut the clip down just to make sure that you're not going through it. But you'll be presented with this screen next uh, with the express settings. We'll go ahead and go through the customized settings just to kind of see what options are available. These can all be toggled. I assume in the express settings, this just automatically says yes to everything. Uh, as far as Siri setup goes, that is a preference. I set up Siri just to see what it will be like. I will be testing that as well. It isn't a new feature, but it's definitely something worth diving into. Much like Google's Assistant, it does require you to say a couple phrases so that the phone can get familiar with your voice and also activate while the phone is dormant. Now this next part is a little interesting. It is the True Tone display. Uh, this is something Apple has previously introduced, but it actually uh, calculates the ambient light that it's receiving and changes the tone of the screen to match the surrounding light. Uh, as you can see, when I hit the button for without True Tone, you can see that the screen uh, goes to a more bluish tint uh, and then when releasing it it actually naturally kind of adjusts to the ambient light so right there it's white and then it starts to kind of spread and make the screen a little bit more orange right now the room is uh, similar to that color it is under studio lights so this is kind of interesting to see uh, I'll be testing it out to see how well it works now we do have the tutorial, so this is giving you a live demo of what the new actions look like on the iPhone 10. We did see this previously in the instruction manual, but it's kind of nice to be able to see it in full motion. Uh, so you can see that uh, you can switch between apps by pulling up and then the cards come out. And then you can access the controls by, by pulling down from the right tab, which probably will take a little bit of getting used to for most iOS users. But for me, I have not used one in a while. So we shall see how that works. But this is pretty much the iPhone 10 in a nutshell, as far as the unboxing goes. I can tell you off the bat, the screen, the display looks great. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe, but it does look different than other panels that I've dealt with in the past. Currently, I'm using the LG V30. We know that screen is not the best, but uh, I am also using the Pixel XL from 2016. Uh, comparing those two to this, this looks a little bit more... I think the best way to describe it is that the display looks a lot closer to the actual glass. So your that layer that you usually kind of perceive is not there, or it is definitely uh, a lot smaller, which brings a different kind of experience. But, but again, this is a quick first impression of the display. More testing will be done as it gets used throughout the week things like brightness outdoors will be put to the test. Let's go ahead and take a look at the display a little bit closer here. You can see that everything looks crisp. Icons look good, 